Who here thinks they have a good definition of the word relationship? Yeah, in the back. Respect for one another yeah. in, their, in their position in life. If we go to dictionary, we get a connection, association, or involvement. Relationships and establishing relationships help you as an RA and they make your job so much easier. The stronger relationships you have, the easier your job is. That's relationships right there, guys. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it reminds me of something. It's a little bit like a mushroom. And relationships help you grow, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Relationships oftentimes require effort. Believe it or not, not everyone is going to want to be best friends with their RA. But they're going to require effort, and the effort has to come from you. And you want to be clear about expectations. Right? And this is important for the hall directors, assistant hall directors, and also for you as RAs with your residents. Being clear about what your expectations are of the residents so that they know. Sir, what is your name? Yes. Sam. The most important word for many people, the most important word in any language is their name. Sam is very snazzily dressed. I like it. So he is snazzly dressed Sam. Oh, go ahead and stand up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He is snazzily dressed Sam in my head wearing that outfit. So if you want to create a dialogue, if you want to have respect for someone, learn that person's name. The youngest person is going to point to anyone else in the circle and they're going to say their name. You're going to feel that urge to start walking right away because you see someone coming at you, but you have to wait until they say yes. How does this relate to communication? Yeah. So body language is a huge piece of communication, so it's not just verbal. You want to have honest conversations with your residents, and they're gonna vary. First week of school, you're probably gonna talk about how do you think the Buckeyes are gonna do. Later on down the road, you're gonna build that relationship more, and you're gonna get to the point where you might have more serious conversations. You have experience, but there's also a potential downside that you might say, you know what, I've seen this before. I had a resident last year that didn't know what they wanted to do. This is what I did for them, so this is gonna be the same solution that works for this new person. It's not the case always because it's a different person. So respecting that that is an individual and that they have different needs, they have different levels of trust, and you've built up different, a different level of relationship with them. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how this applies in maybe a little bit more specific way. And we're gonna look at some scenarios and you guys are gonna act them out and then also talk a little bit about them and try to leverage what we've learned today, what we've talked about from an experience standpoint and what we talked about from the slides, how you can handle those scenarios based on that information. What are some things that, that worked well that you guys talked about in that scenario? Yeah, find that common ground. You know, a lot of times residents will be surprised, like, what? You play sports too? <laughs> That's something I do. <laughs> oh no, anyone named Sarah has become a zombie. A lot of times that fun and enthusiasm is contagious. And so if you look like you're having fun at an RA program and fun at an event that you're doing, that confidence is gonna bring people on board with you. Stop. Name. If you can be confident about something silly like this, you can certainly be confident about something you guys know about, which is being an RA and establishing relationships. 